I wasn't always rich, powerful, and popular. Once upon a time, my family was broke. When I say broke, I mean really, really broke. I had duct tape on my shoes and my ripped jeans weren't cool like every other kid's because mine were ripped from only wearing that one pair. Teachers thought I was a bad student because we rarely had power so I couldn't do my homework. But before I continue my insane story, remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on a crazy story like this one. I don't remember exactly when that changed because it was a slow process. I remember waking up almost every night when I was a kid and finding my parents worrying about bills and debts at the table. But one night, I woke up and they were sound asleep. The next morning, they were smiling. I didn't eat cardboard cereal that morning. My mom made a whole feast. Things started changing around our house very quickly. Gone was the old furniture inherited from my great aunt, who was a big smoker, so you can imagine how nasty that furniture was. We had brand new stuff everywhere. I got all new clothes and expensive ones too. Our pantry was stocked full of foods I always saw my classmates eating, all the best snacks. I wasn't embarrassed to invite friends over anymore. One day I came home from school and I got scared because everything was gone and my mom was standing at the door with suitcases. Did we get evicted? I asked with a shaky voice while my eyes started getting kind of teary. It wouldn't have been the first time. My mom just laughed and pointed at a really cool car pulling up. The window of the brand new car rolled down and I saw my dad sitting there, looking pretty smug. My mom grabbed my hand and we ran to put our stuff in the car and hopped in. That was the day we moved into the mansion. My parents had bought this incredibly luxurious place and I felt like the main character in a movie. They even put me in a private school. I was scared the first day because I saw all these kids with expensive clothes, bags, and phones, and I was used to being the poor kid in my little public school downtown. To my surprise, I was the richest kid there. Everyone flocked to me and wanted to be my friend. The only awkward moments I had at that school was when they asked me what my parents did for a living. That's when it hit me. I actually didn't know. I just said they owned their own business. I didn't know that would turn out to be true. When I was in high school, my parents became a bit strict. Not the traditional be home by 7.30 sharp way. See, rich kids live for the thrill. What was the most thrilling thing we had access to that wouldn't ruin our lives, possibly forever? The poor neighborhoods. Kids in my grade loved to throw parties in abandoned buildings or under bridges in the poor neighborhoods. To my terrible disadvantage, that was the one thing my parents were strict about. Because it's dangerous. There's so many kidnappings there, dear, said my mom every time I asked why I wasn't allowed to go there. There was a party coming up soon in an abandoned warehouse in the poor side of town. I don't think my parents thought their parenting method through because the thrill of going there was much bigger for me than for my classmates because they forbid it. I pretended I was going to be working out in our home gym late at night, but when my parents went to sleep on the other side of the mansion, I slid down a drain pipe and slipped into our garage, taking out my least expensive car. Hey, I knew it was dangerous. I didn't want to catch the wrong people's attention. Ah, the beautiful sound of cop sirens, ambulances, and fights. I drove through the night and towards the abandoned warehouse that would be our venue that night. When I got there, the music was booming and everyone was having a blast. I grabbed a drink, danced, talked to some friends, and chatted up pretty girls all night. It was awesome. I was grabbing a bottle of water from the coolers when I felt the atmosphere in the room shift. I looked at the entrances and saw they were sort of blocked by these guys I had never seen before. There was one on each door. People around me started getting more and more nervous. If the men had been younger, my classmates would have wanted to fight them, but these guys were actual adults, which made it kind of creepy. Suddenly, the music stopped and flashlights turned on really bright ones that blinded us. People started screaming and running to try and find the exits. I ran too, but I felt someone grab me by the back of the shirt. And then my arms were behind my back and I was being pushed into the back of a van. Something blunt hit my head and I was out cold. I woke up on a thin mattress with a rock hard, crusty pillow. My head was killing me. I stood up and found that I was in something like a jail cell with bars and everything. Where am I? Somebody help me! I shouted out, but nobody came. 
I made as much noise as I could to get anybody's attention, but nothing. Were my parents right about this place being dangerous? Did I get kidnapped? I screamed for hours with no response. I was exhausted when a man showed up and threw some food and a burner phone into my cell. Call your parents, said the grumpy man before walking out as I stuffed my mouth full of food. My hands were shaking as I dialed in my mom's number and I could feel my heart beating out of my chest with every ring. Hello, who is this? I heard my mom ask in a shaky voice. Mom, it's me. I half laughed, half cried as I had tears streaming down my face. Nikki, gasped my mom. I told her what happened and she said she and my dad would do everything in their power to get whoever took me to set me free. The man who was there before came back and motioned for me to give him the phone. He had the phone between his shoulder and cheek as he took the keys from his back pocket and opened the door to my cell. He waved his hand, but I'm sure he looked puzzled. You're free to go, kid, he said. I didn't know whether to walk or run, so I ran, of course. I ran down a corridor with only one huge door at the end of it. I pushed through the door and couldn't believe my eyes. It was like a huge hangar. You'd expect a place like that to be sorta quiet because of its size, but it was insanely loud. There were wails and cries all around me. The place was divided into small sections. I ran through them and saw what was in the little cells. They were kids. I saw some of my classmates and kids from other schools, all filthy rich. They weren't hurt or anything, they were just complaining as usual, but multiplied times 100 because they had their phones taken away and some were scared because they had no idea what happened to them. I found one of my friends that I had just been with before we were taken. He was rocking back and forth in his little cell. What happened to you, man? I asked him while sitting on the floor next to his cell. He clutched the bars and I saw the fear in his eyes. He asked me how I had gotten free, but I told him I'd explain later and wanted to know what happened to him. It was horrible. I'm in so much pain. My friend complained. He said he woke up when I was still unconscious and that they failed to knock him out again, so they kept trying. They had thrown him and a bunch of other kids in here and hadn't given them food or water in hours. I was confused. Why was I alone and why did I get to call my parents? Why did I get some sort of special treatment? I walked back to my cell and found that the guy who had given me food was still there. Give me the phone, I said, not afraid anymore, because I had the feeling that nothing was going to happen to me. The guy handed it over like it was nothing. I dialed my mom's number and she picked up with a voice as scared and worried as before. Mom, why are they treating me better than everyone else here? What's the difference between me and them? I asked her sternly. There was silence and then a sigh. We'll be there in 15 she said before hanging up the phone. I was pacing around my cell, not because I couldn't go anywhere, but because all the cries for help were annoying me. My parents both walked in, looking very severe. You're being treated better because... My mom started, but then she looked at my dad as if expecting him to complete her sentence. Because you're our son, and we run this whole thing here. My dad said, I'll be honest, none of that processed in my brain. I sat down on the hard mattress, expecting them to continue. We needed cash, and your mother had a little incident with some rich daddy's girl, so we kept her for a while and her father paid a ransom, explained my dad. We figured if it worked for them, it could work for others too, said my mom. I was shocked. I mean, how was I supposed to react to knowing that the reason we're so rich is because my parents kidnapped teenagers? Now that you know, we've been thinking about this for a while actually. I was kind of scared of what he would say next. How about you join the family business? He asked with raised eyebrows. My mom looked excited at the idea. I gave it some thought. I didn't want to kidnap kids, plus they'd recognize me at parties and stuff. The whole business would crumble if people knew it was my parents collecting ransom for their kids and we'd go broke paying off lawsuits. Then I had an idea. I have one condition, I said. My parents looked eager to know what it was, and I knew they'd be proud of me when they did. The next day, I was walking down a highway wearing torn clothes and with my hands bound behind my back. It was scorching hot, and the dirt I had smeared all over my face was starting to get annoying. When are they gonna show up? I asked myself. Then I saw the flashing red and blue lights in the distance. A cop car was coming to pick me up. They put me in the back seat carefully and questioned me at the station. I was scared they'd trick me into saying something I wasn't supposed to, but that fear melted away after a few hours in the interrogation room with the detective. 
My parents picked me up and we acted as if we hadn't seen each other in days, as if they thought I was dead. It was an impressive performance, in my opinion. As soon as we got home, I took a nice long shower and then we went straight into my parents' study to plan the kidnapping I had in mind. You see, kids were too risky. If they recognized me, we were toast. Who would I never run into unless I went out of my way? Rich old men. I had a type of rich old man in mind too. The kind that just got married to his young new wife and hasn't had the chance to change his will because right now he feels like he will live forever. All I needed was a suit and a little conductor's hat. Our target's driver was waiting for him in the car, so all I had to do was pull him out of there and take his place. One of my parents' workers dragged him away. The old man didn't even look at me and went straight to reading the newspaper after he told me where we were going. I could already tell this was gonna be a piece of cake. I pretended I made a wrong turn and told the old man we'd have to go a different route. Wait, who are you? What happened to Jasper? The old man asked me, puzzled. He asked me to sub in for him, sir. He was feeling under the weather, I replied calmly. The old man grunted and went back to his newspaper. We have arrived at our destination, sir, I said as I parked the car. Wait a minute, this isn't- The old man started saying before being cut off by my mother pulling a sack over his head and pulling him out of the car. My parents and I were walking the man into the building when we heard sirens. In an instant, we all had cops on us. They handcuffed us and threw us into the back of their cars. Mom, Dad, I shouted in fear. They assured me everything would be all right. I knew it would, only for me though. The detective took off my handcuffs. You did a good job, kid, he said before we drove to the police station. Later that day, they let me go and I went to visit my parents. I gave them both the same little speech. Mommy, Daddy, I will do everything I can to get you out of here, I cried to them. Remember that I said the fear melted away after I was interrogated? Well, of course it did. You're not afraid when you have nothing to hide. And the detective got every ounce of information out of me. He made me see things in a different light. If my parents were both in prison, all their money would go to me, their only son. All I had to do was cry a little every month when I went to visit them. And then I could go home and live like a king now that I had enough money for three millionaires to be satisfied. 